You belong to them. They will never let you go. I'll find a way. guys i'm in the imax theater i'm the only one here it's all emptied out i did see 50 shades freed in imax um i just one of my questions right now going through my head is what was the point of having this movie in imax um i'll get more into it on my review when i get home so yeah i'm going to be reviewing the movie and my imax experience so i'll see you guys home I made a vow to love you faithfully, forsaking all others, to comfort you in times of need, and to keep you safe for as long as we both shall live. It seems you're pregnant, Mrs. Gray. So, when it comes to being someone who reviews movies on YouTube, um, Yes, I watch the good movies, but sometimes I even have to go through the bad movies. And that's a, a decision that I decide to take. Um, so, most of that is thanks to MoviePass, of course. But today, or the, a few days ago actually, I decided to go ahead and witness the final chapter of the Fifty Shades trilogy, uh, Fifty Shades Freed and IMAX. I had a few AMC stubs credits that were about to expire, so I bought an IMAX ticket to go see this in IMAX. Um, yeah, yeah. Fifty Shades Freed is the third and the final Fifty Shades movie, and Christian and Anastasia get married in the beginning of this movie, but the real story is basically a old co-worker of Anastasia kind of starts to stalk her and give her threats, um, or at least that's what you think the story is or they make you think the story is because that's only about 30 percent of the movie um the actual movie is basically christian kind of being an asshole sometimes and anna and christian going on you know on trips and having sex and then this stalker plot line kind of appears out of nowhere and it comes and it goes okay so i'm i'm gonna be honest here when it comes to the 50 shades franchise it's a franchise that I both kind of hate, but I kind of love. Um, I saw the first one for the first time over the summer, and I, I, if I were to give it something out of 10, I'd give it a 5 out of 10, because while there are some things that I do think are not that bad, there are some awful things about that movie. And then um, Black Friday, um, I went ahead and I bought the Fifty Shades Darker DVD for one ninety six at Walmart, uh, so two dollars and I was like yeah I'll just blind watch it and I did and it's pretty terrible uh four out of ten by the ways but um I I, I still kind of enjoyed it and I'll openly admit it again I'm fully aware how bad these movies are but guilty as charged I actually kind of enjoyed this movie like these movies are so bad it's so good type material because the the writing in these movies are truly awful, but I'm just calling it as I see it. These movies, even though they're so bad, they're entertaining. The story is plain and generic, but I kind of actually saw some effort put into the story, unlike the previous two installments. Um, I actually felt like they were actually kind of trying to tell a story with this movie. The thing is, the story itself, it's unfocused and it does tend to get sloppy. Like, this movie's so absurd and ridiculous, it feels pretty immature at times. The relationship between Anastasia and Christian is so unbalanced and so toxic. I'm just sitting in my seat and just thinking to myself, how are they still in a relationship? This is not a good relationship right here. Um, there's actually a scene in this movie where uh, Christian actually gets mad at Anastasia for not taking his last name. Um, instead of calling herself Anastasia Gray, now that she's married to Christian, she keeps on calling herself Anastasia Steele. And Christian it, it literally comes over to her workplace and starts bitching on her. See, I just don't see how 
that's a working relationship. I'll give them this. The acting has slightly improved over the first movie and slightly over the second movie. Um, Dakota Johnson, who plays Anastasia Steele, uh, you know, she's a good actress and all. Just when it comes to these Fifty Shades movies, like, I kind of like her in these movies, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, she could be doing better right now. But, um, you know, just judging her in this movie, I thought she was okay. You know, I guess she was kind of good. And then, uh, the guy who plays Christian, uh, Jamie, 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 is it Jamie Duran, his last name? I, I didn't write it down, so, um, but yeah, the, the thing is, he played Christian with no life whatsoever in the first movie. He improved a lot in the second movie, and here, he kind of also improves upon his character in this movie. So, uh, yeah, he also kind of does a good job. Look, there are some very entertaining scenes in this movie, but... You know, there's just a overuse of pop music over those scenes. Um, there's this one scene in particular, this one scene where uh, Anastasia is kind of being chased by, you know, her stalker, and it's kind of like a car chase. And, uh, you know, one thing that could have made that scene much better is just remove the pop music that they were using in the background for that scene. And I kind of, like, use, like, some type of suspenseful music to kind of, uh, you know, give you, like, more tension between that scene or you know so you could be more tense during that scene um but there are a lot of scenes where they do use pop music and i just this movie this franchise alone does that a lot so i'm kind of used to it already but i i don't think it's really a good thing as someone who likes and dislikes these movies at the same time um this movie was pretty bad yeah it was bad but uh, i mean that in the most enjoyable best way possible now, when I give out grades to movies, I usually kind of merge my enjoyment of the movie and my criticisms of the movie. And, yeah, I said this a lot in this review. I'll say it one last time. There was a lot of times I found myself enjoying this movie. But at the same time, I can't ignore how bad this movie can get and how much criticisms I have with the movie. So, kind of merging those thoughts together uh, to kind of create my overall grade for this movie, um, I decided, and I'm going to give it Shades Reed a C-. Look, I know how bad these movies are, but this franchise is just a big guilty pleasure to me. Like, I know how bad these movies are, and I acknowledge that, but I just really enjoy them, and there are just, like, personally, some things that I do like about this movie, and that's how I felt with Fit Shades Reed. There are some things... I did like about this movie, and um, again, I was entertained watching this movie. Uh, I know a lot of you guys absolutely disagree with that and hate these movies, and I see why. I won't argue with you. Um, I'm, you know, yeah, but I, <laughs> yeah, I also do know some people that did like this movie, um, and you know, there are people who didn't like the previous Fifty Shades movie, so that's a really big surprise. And yes, it's much better than Fifty Shades Darker. So um, I did see this in IMAX. There's nothing to see an IMAX here, nothing worth uh, paying an extra five to six dollars to see an IMAX, but um, yeah, anyways, have you guys seen Fifty Shades Freed? Have you guys seen it? What did you guys think about it? Tell me in the comment section down below. Have you seen the Fifty Shades trilogy? Tell me what you think about all three movies, if you've seen all three movies, but um, anyways, thank you so much for watching, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.